Welcome to Virtual Paint Night number four. Tonight's virtual painting is brought to you by USAA, serving the military community and their families for over 98 years. And First Command, taking pride in helping clients get financially squared away from the start of their military careers to retirement and beyond. No federal endorsement of sponsors intended. All right, so jumping right in, our palette looks like this. So we have our black, blue, cadmium red, and our titanium white. We're gonna go in first with blue. We're gonna paint pretty much the entire canvas. But do take note, we are not painting portrait style. Portrait is like this, vertical up and down. This time, we're turning it to a landscape because we are in fact painting a landscape. So we're gonna go in with our flat brush, three quarter inch flat brush, dip it right into the blue, and we're just going to go after our, our canvas. We're gonna paint the entire thing, probably down to about an inch and a half. You wanna do nice, long, horizontal strokes with your paint. We're not gonna go up and down, we're gonna go side to side. You can make it thicker in some areas, lighter in the other. You just want to make sure that your entire canvas is covered. I know I tend to paint a little bit fast. Um, that is because acrylic paint does dry a little bit faster. And when we are blending, we want that paint to still be a little tacky so it's easier to blend. After we get our blue base on, we are going to be throwing in some red and some white. Don't forget to pay attention to the edges of your canvas. If you're not gonna put this in a frame and you wanna hang this on the wall, it just looks a lot more complete if the edges are painted.
Okay, once you have your blue painted, you're gonna wipe your brush off. Remember, we wipe before we rinse. So wipe your brush. And then you're gonna rinse your brush out. All right, so we've already rinsed our brush. Um, now we're gonna go in with some red. So take your flat brush, we're gonna dip it in the red, and we're gonna focus on doing like one line across. It's okay if it's broken. Um, so flat brush in the red. And what we're trying to do is kind of create an American flag in this background. So we're not gonna paint any red right here, red or white. So our first line is going to be, we're going to start right around here, and we're just going to take our flat, and we're just going to do a swoosh, and that's it. We're not going to make it fill in. That's all we're going to do. I'm going to break that one up a little bit. If you want to blend it in a little bit down here, you can, but you want it to look broken. Next step, we're gonna dip our paint, our brush in the paint again. We're gonna go about an inch down, and then we're gonna pull another line across. Just go back and forth, and we're not gonna make it real dark. Now we're going to repeat that step again, put about an inch, an inch and a half space. And paint a line. It can be broken, doesn't have to be full line. This is your background, so it's creating a sky. Next red line, we're going to go ahead and take almost all the way across our canvas. So again, about an inch to an inch and a half. And then we're going to do the same thing, a big, nice, full line. If you want it to be lighter, just don't press so hard down with your brush. Use a very light touch. I would recommend only dipping your brush in the paint for each line. You don't need to keep dipping because you want those lines to be all you can see them, not very saturated with that red color. All right, then we're gonna add one more. Don't forget your ends, your sides. Okay, once you have that, you want to wipe your brush and then rinse it. What did you mean when you said you're going to pull out your bottom line? Okay, so when I said I'm going to pull my bottom line, what I meant is I'm going to blend it out, so I'm going to take the, the extra paint. See here, it's a little thick here, and on this line, this bottom line that I created, I'm just going to thin it out, 
and kind of blend it down. Okay, once you have wiped and rinsed your brush, we're going to go in, same concept, same movements, but we're going to be using the white. So make sure your brush is nice and clean. I'm gonna go in, dip it in the white. If you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, you can use the edge of your plate to kind of pull some of that paint off. And then we're going to go into the top and we're going to Some of my blue is not dry, so it's pulling and making it a little bit light blue. If you want more white, kind of define those lines, you can add more white. If you look, like the look of it, leave it. Again, go ahead and step back from your canvas, um, and that'll let you know kind of where you stand, and then you can add more. Now, if you think it's too much white, wipe your brush, rinse it out, and you can go back and add some more blue on top of it. There's also an option, so I'm not going to put any more white on my brush, but I am going to dip it in water and kind of water my brush down a little bit and use it. I don't like these brush marks right here, so I'm going to see if I can pull it with some water. So my brush is a little bit wet. easier to blend that. So again, not real wet.
I'm still going in, <clears throat> just wetting my brush and then kind of just softening out these lines. I want mine to have more of a blended look. I pulled, I want to clean up my blue a little bit and kind of have more of a blue section. So what I'm going to do is go back in with my flat brush. I'm going to dip it in the blue and pull paint into it this way and kind of fade it in. Um, that's just a personal preference, but if you decide that you just want more blue up there, you can do the same. So now we got to the point, um, we're going to throw some stars up here, but we're going to wait for this to dry. Um, if you want to speed up the process, you can definitely hit it with a blow dryer. If not, just go ahead and wait, grab yourself a drink, a snack, and then we'll see you back here shortly. Okay, so um, next step, we're going to be using our number four round brush and the white paint. Um, so we're going to dip our brush in the paint and then we're going to roll it. So most of it comes off on the side. We want to roll, roll it on the edge of our plate and roll our paint tip into a point. Now we're going to go in and we're just going to place stars very randomly. We're just going to lightly dot. You can place bigger ones. Cactus, we put dots on and made stars. We're not going to do that with this one. After I have my large dots on there, then we're going to grab our flat wash brush, our big one.
to go ahead and wipe this brush off, rinse it. And then we're gonna grab our flat brush. So with our flat brush, we're gonna kind of feather it out. You can even do it on your hand. And what I want you to do, so I want to be very careful with this, we're gonna be a mini version of splatter painting. So you're going to dip the very tip of your flat brush into the white. So you've only covered it, just the tip, and then go ahead and dab it off. Now, if you have gloves, I would suggest putting them on at this point, unless you don't mind getting your hands dirty. After we've got our paint on our brush, we're just gonna go up to the canvas, hold it and use whatever finger you don't mind getting dirty, and pull, and we're gonna kind of flick. If you're not getting a lot of paint, you can also dip it in the water a little bit. I'm going to extend it down kind of into my stripes a little bit. Is it working? Once you're happy with your stars and your splatter, which is also smaller stars, go ahead and wipe your brush and rinse it off. And it's at this point, if you haven't covered your paint area, go ahead and give a quick inspection. If you got any of those small little white dots, now would be the time to clean those up. You guys ready to move on? Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're gonna go in and add our skyline. We have chosen the San Antonio skyline. Uh, so bear with me. Um, we're going to cover the whole bottom with a black stripe, and then we're gonna start building um, all of the buildings, our iconic buildings in San Antonio. So I'm gonna be using the number four round brush. Um, you can switch to the flat brush or even a larger round brush to fill in the buildings once we get them kind of pieced together. But um, I'm gonna be using this one, so it's gonna take me a little bit longer. So make sure that your brush is nice and clean, and then we're gonna go straight into the black. And we wanna go ahead and put a horizon line across the bottom of our painting. So we left about an inch to an inch and a half we just want to take where 
we, the paint stops and kind of run this black line across. you've got your black line go ahead and fill in from the black line to the bottom of your canvas And don't forget the edges of your canvas if you've chosen to paint them. give you guys a minute to catch up and then we'll go ahead and start adding our buildings in. So the next step, we're going to start by just drawing some straight lines down where our tallest buildings are going to be. Um, of course, the most prominent one that I'm sure we all recognize is our needle, which is our Tower of Americas. Is it Tower of Americas or Tower of America? Potato, potato. Oh, great, okay. <laughs> I feel like I should know that, being a San Antonian. All right, so we're going to put this guy a little off center. So kind of go to the center of your canvas. We're going to 
eye a line up and then we're going to shift over roughly half an inch to three quarters of an inch and we're going to start this needle at our third red line from the top third down so what i want you to do is take that line move that halfway over and then you're just going to drag a straight line down your canvas now I want you to shift over so this is another tall building um, he's not as tall and I could not tell you what building this is but we're going to go probably about two inches down from our needle, go about three inches over, and then we're going to draw a straight line down. Now our third tall line is going to be almost the same height as our second, only we're going to go to the far right side of our canvas. When I say far, I don't mean that far. So we're just gonna three, maybe about six inches. We're gonna go right underneath. So this guy came to here, right at this white line. So halfway, maybe slightly lower. And then we're just gonna draw a straight line down. I know it looks funky right now. Trust me guys, it'll look better. Okay. So now we're going to go and we're going to work on our needle. The point is going to be as tall. It's going to be the length. It's going to go all the way. So this, our second line that we drew, the needle is going to go all the way to that second line. So what I want you to do is clean that up a little bit. I know my um, line got a little bit broken. So I want to make sure it's a nice crisp line. After I do that, right in line with our second building, we're going to draw probably about, let's say, three quarters of an inch long horizontal line right across that needle. Now I'm going to angle the next two lines down. We're going to go out about half an inch. So angle this down and angle this down. I'm going to make it go out a little bit further. So we're going to have this line be roughly about an inch long. Now we're going to angle it back towards the center line, but not as, so it's a very light angle. So in between, let me see, not 45 degrees, we like a 20 something. Don't listen to me, just watch me. <laughs> okay, so slight angle. And then you're going to connect those two. Now I want you to fill this shape in completely back.
And in looking at this, I want to kind of bring the top of our uh, needle or this like main part, I want to bring it out a little bit more. So I'm going to extend that top angle out. And then connect these two points. So now our needle has a pretty wide base. So what I want you to do is fill in your line all the way down. Make sure that's a nice full base to complete this first tower. Okay, with this next one, okay, our next tall building, how are you doing? So we're going to go about maybe about one inch down, three quarters to one inch down, and we're going to just draw a line, short line, so half an inch long, and pull it down. This has a very a stepped look on the top of this tower. So after we draw our line, now we're gonna go pretty much right underneath it, maybe not even a centimeter down, step out a couple millimeters, and we're gonna draw a line. We're gonna do that one more time. We have three steps, so we need to create three steps. Once you have your lines drawn and you've connected the top to the horizon line, go ahead and fill that building in.
There is another building tucked right in here. So right, let's go up about two inches from your horizon line right next to your building. And we're going to kick him out roughly about an inch and then drag that line down. So we're creating, we're adding a rectangle. And then you're gonna fill that in. Actually looks like he goes up a little further. So I'm gonna pull this up. We're going to work on the left side. If you're looking at your canvas, the left side of the canvas. Um, so now we're going to go probably roughly a centimeter, a centimeter space. We're not going to go as high as this building, but we're going to the top to see where my red line is. I'm going to start there. So I'm going to take my centimeter space and then I'm just going to draw a straight line down. So the top of this building is going to be lower than this one. We're going to make it about an inch wide and then pull that back down. Once we have all our buildings on, we are going to play with this horizon line. So keep that in mind as well. The next building, we're gonna, this is gonna be taller. So he's gonna be probably, we're gonna give about three quarters of an inch lower than our step needle building. Um, and we've got, this is a bigger space, about three quarters of an inch space here. So just, we're gonna, Three quarters of an inch, pull this up, and then we're going to stop about right there. The width of this building is going to mirror the one that we just did, so roughly three quarters to an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch. Draw that line down and then fill in this building. For this last building on this side, it's going to be another step. We're not going to be able to get all of it in, but we're going to start at the same height as this building. So we're going to, it looks like, pull it in a little bit tighter. So we're going to start, maybe give it roughly a centimeter. Fill that in. 
and then we're going to step him up. So we're going to go move over a little bit to the left, about half a centimeter, a couple millimeters. Step up and then pull over to the edge of your canvas. So it looks like we have just one step. and go ahead and paint him off the edge of your canvas. So we've got some other buildings in here that are gonna eat up some of this horizon line. So we're gonna pull this horizon line up about a full inch from this building to this building. So just go ahead and draw a line across there and then fill that in. We're also going to pull this horizon line between the building and then our needle step building just up roughly a centimeter. And we're going to drag that all the way across and make that line go to our needle as well, our big tower. So we're just taking a line straight across these buildings from our tower across our step needle tower to our first smaller building. Okay, the next one, is, he's an interesting building. I really need to learn all of our buildings. I wanna know what these are. Um, we're gonna start, he's gonna line up with this building. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, start over here. So we've got roughly, it's probably about an equidistant space. So about an inch over, same height as this corner, but we're gonna angle it up. It goes up in a weird angle. So I'm just going to put a dot where I want my starter point to be. And then our angle is not going to be as high as this one. We're going to flatten it a little bit. So let's just say this is going to be the top of this building. And that line's going to be about an inch and a half, or no, an inch and a quarter long. Once you've got your line, I want you to take each point and draw a straight line down. goofed a little bit so if you have to make your building wider you have to make your building wider Now the horizon line between the needle and this building is going to be higher than this horizon line. So we're going to step up about another centimeter, draw this line across, and fill that box.
Okay, so we've got a little building in between um, this one and this tall one, but we're gonna work on this tall guy first. So with this needle, we're gonna go down about an inch from the needle point and we're gonna angle it down. Now we're gonna have a sharper angle than this building. So let's go down about an inch and then have this point Once you have that marked down, I want you to just pull a straight line down. This guy gets wider about two inches down. So right below the point of our angled building, we're gonna do a crossbar. So we're gonna kick him out about two millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is kind of use this white line that I have going across as a reference point. And just draw a line horizontal across that building. So it just comes out a little bit now I'm going to take the tips of my lines, use those as points, and connect that point down to my horizon line. Do the same thing on the other side. And then fill that shape in, and we have completed that building. Remember I told you we had a short little building? So we're gonna connect this horizon line. We're gonna keep that going all the way across. Let's go ahead and connect that horizon line across and fill that in. And then we're gonna bump up. It's a small little rectangle that we're gonna throw in between our angled building and the needle building that we just created. So we're gonna go up very, very close to our angle building. Just kind of pop a, build, pop a little rectangle in there. Okay, now that we've got that little guy in there, we're gonna keep going with our horizon line. All the way across, we're gonna drop it, oh, roughly a centimeter. And we're gonna carry it out an inch. Now I want you to step this line up. So this is what you should look like right now. Now we're gonna take the top of the point that we just created and we're just gonna stretch it across. And 
Now we're going to go walk it over about three quarters of an inch. And then we're gonna go up an inch and draw a line. After you've got your line up, I want you to extend, do a horizontal line, one inch long, and then I want you to connect the end of that line all the way to the, the horizon line. And then fill that shape. After we have our shape, we're going to go in and drop it about two millimeters and create another step shelf. So go to the top of your building that we just created, and then we're going to draw a horizontal line cutting across that building through the top. After you've got your line drawn, I want you to take the edge of those lines and draw them down. Connect them all the way down. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is the side of this building also angles down, so there's another building connected. We're going to match it with this building right here. So go here, go out a little bit, and then angle that down. It's gonna angle right off your canvas. And just fill in that space. I think I want the base of my needle to be a little bit fatter, so I'm going to go in and kind of clean that up a bit. And there is our San Antonio skyline. Okay, at this point, you want to definitely sign your painting, um, however you want to do it. And then that is a wrap. Thanks for painting, and thank you again to First Command and USAA for sponsoring. No federal endorsement of sponsors intended. See you next month.